Why did you make the choice as, as a writer to have the death in the past and it, as opposed to have the death as part of the story? Well, because... <laughs> <laughs> because, well, for a start, I think as a novelist, you don't really... It's not a plan. It's almost it takes you over. Mm -hmm. It's like you're taken away by the fairies and that's what happened in the story. But I wanted to write about Bridget as... Um, as a, a lot of people find themselves as a woman later in life who suddenly finds herself alone with kids, going out and trying to rediscover herself as a woman, um, and a single mum. And the point is that Mark Darcy, the quintessential gentleman, the man who took this ordinary, vulnerable girl who was trying to be perfect and failing and said, I love you just as you are, he would never leave her. And so I didn't want to have him leave her. I didn't want to spoil who he was. And I thought it was better that he stayed, stayed sort of noble and his memory shining through the new book, like Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> because to a lot of people who really want a relationship, it is Jesus-like. <laughs> you need a savior, don't you? The, the choice of death, I mean, talk, a landmine. In the pursuit of his noble cause, Mark Darcy is a human rights lawyer, um, he thought it was an acceptable risk. He had small children. He went out to the Sudan to save a political prisoner, which, indeed, he did save them. And I won't spoil it by saying what happened, but it only emerges later in the book right. because Bridget has to get through it and, and deal with it. But there's a... You know, like all of us, she finds fun on the way and her right. friends make her laugh and take her out, rather like taking Granny to the seaside, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, that, that kind of death is sort of close to home for you, isn't it? For me... If I play this, can we watch this? Look at this clip here. This old and now, clip. if I may, to what for all of us on this week has overshadowed the making of that report. The team had finished filming and was on its way out of the rebel area on the route home. They were driving along a dirt road when one of their vehicles was blown up by a landmine. Alan Stewart, the producer, was killed in the explosion. He was 35 years old. Alan would have been the first to say that the risk of getting killed goes with the job, which is true, but does nothing to ease the shock and the sense of loss that his colleagues and friends here now feel. So, um, Where Hunger is a Weapon is this show. You were a researcher on that show? Mm hmm And that producer met a fate. It was so tragic, that story. And you worked on that particular story. That's why when I was reading this, I thought, oh, my God, this is something that she really knows about. Yeah, I used to... Um, I was a journalist. Um, and I did, yes, I worked in the Sudan a lot, and, but that did happen. They'd actually left me behind at the border um, because I was a girl, which I was kind of cross about. Um, and then they didn't come back. And uh, it's funny, I knew something had happened. We were camping, I was camping in the aid agency grounds and I just got up and got dressed like the girl guide that I am and waited and then they came back and indeed Alan had being killed. So I do know about the hard things that happen in life, but what in fascinates me is the way that that coexists with humour. Sometimes it's black humour. I mean, I remember when I was... I sound like one of those old war veterans. When I was in the Sudan... <laughs> um, <laughs> was it a good war? <laughs> <laughs> but I interviewed this... Um, a refugee who, who gave us this really heart rending account of, of their plight and why they needed money and we were all practically in tears and then we stopped rolling and he went how did I do <laughs> <laughs> and I think my experience anyway of life is even when tough stuff happens people still they get through it by making each other laugh by finding the lightness in life